Wait, so are we allowed to accessorize these things after midnight? Here's your look new NECA Toys Gremlins Accessory Set. Any fan of the Gremlins movies knows the rules. Keep them out of sunlight, don't get them wet, and never, oh wait, too late. This set of frequently requested accessories is scaled to complement NECA's line of Gremlins action figures. It includes aerobic shirt, leg warmers, ski mask, sitting and standing gizmo minifigures, race car, and Gremlin cocoon. Luckily, when this set was dropped off at my doorstep, it wasn't raining. Or believe you me, I would have had a lot more problems than just getting these guys out of the box. Before we get a closer look at the Gremlins accessory set, let me go ahead and thank the folks over at NECA Toys that did provide the sample that we're about to have a look at. Just looking at the lay of the land here, I'm trying to figure out what exactly I can measure. Well, I'm sure you guys would probably be the most interested to know how tall the cocoon stands. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the tape measure for that. Taking the tape measure right to the very top of the cocoon, uh, it is on its own about five inches in, in height. Uh, five is actually up here, so it's a little less than that. But I think to round that up, it'd be pretty close to say it's five inches in height. Or to flip that around, you're looking at the cocoon being 12 centimeters tall. The set of accessories do really well to fill in all the gaps of things we've been, as fans of Gremlins movies, been wanting NECA to produce. Primarily, the cocoon. That was the number one thing for me. And yeah, maybe Barbie's race car as well for Gremlin Gizmo to be driving around in. Speaking, though, of Gizmo, let's get a closer look at the little tiny Mogwai. He is quite tiny. In fact, he comes in two variations. One, a st standard standing Gizmo, and then he's got one that's a short, and short sitting Gizmo that sits inside the car. In both the cases, it looks like the heads are very similar to one another. The brown as well, you can see the white has nicely been painted and cleanly applied. The only thing I would say, though, about the arms... Uh, arm-wise at least, is that they seem to be appearing backwards, as if the hands are supposed to be going this way. Again, when you're looking at it with the arms straight like this, he sort of does have like a, a gorilla style of arm to him. If this Mogwai does look rather familiar to you, it just so happens to be the same Mogwai of Gizmo that we got included with Santa Stripe. Ah, uh, yeah, Santa Stripe. A, a video of that I did review a long time ago, if you ever had the chance to check that out. The stripe came included with this particular gizmo. So you can see that the difference of them is just simply more the coloring being slightly darker with the newer release. But other than that, they are exactly the same to one another. With that goes all along with that, the articulation that carries over from the earlier figure we looked at before. The head rotates all the way around. It's on a bulge, right? Goes up, goes down, back and forth. The arms themselves are also on pin joints, so you can rotate them back and forth. The hands themselves do also rotate back and forth, even though they, again, do look a little backwards, don't they? And then there's no articulation for the bottom of the feet. Obviously, stating the obvious thing about the, the gizmo here is to bring in one. This is the recently looked at reissue gizmo. There's quite a considerable size difference between the two. Uh, just to put this one down here, for example, and then we'll put the new gizmo right in the middle of that. And then just bring in, let's slide these guys over just a little bit. Let's bring in, say, the likes of Stripe. So you can see. Yeah, Size-wise, I almost feel as if this gizmo is still too small. This is actually a good-sized gizmo for, again, to size. Yeah, granted, Stripe should be still a little bit taller than gizmo. He probably could, be, if to look at this one, would be just a little bit taller still than that. But I almost feel like he's too small, or gizmo is too small when you compare him along with Stripe here. Obviously, this gizmo would have some harder struggle to sit inside the tiny little Barbie car. There'd be no way to actually sit him inside of that. So they had to scale the car down in order for Gizmo to fit inside of it. And then obviously they would have given you a smaller seated Gizmo that essentially looks the same as, again, this Gizmo, other than this one doesn't have. Well, it has still the arm articulation, and it certainly still has the head articulation, but it's in a seated position. I'm going to go ahead and take Gizmo. First of all, I guess before we do that, let's get a closer look at the Barbie car. The front license plate, I think, actually would have had something printed on that in the movie. And also the same to be said for the back here as well. A few little briefcases, little luggage things on the top of there. It looks like Barbie's going on a trip, or maybe Gizmo's going on a trip. And then you got a little steering wheel in the middle that actually does rotate. It's fairly hollow. It does feel pretty light, but it does have at least rolling wheels. You can go ahead then and take the seated version of Gizmo and sit him inside the car. There's not a lot of 
quarters seem a little cramped. Unfortunately, you can't actually bring his arms inward to have him holding the steering wheel, but at least you've got yourself a driving around gizmo. I have to kind of throw the question out there. I wonder if they could have scaled up. I don't know how many people would really be interested to buy a scaled version of Barbie's car to fit primarily this gizmo. Not even if you could anyways, because you wouldn't be able to bend his legs. Still, though, when you look at the size between the two, this gizmo is a lot taller. And I think, again, more accurately scaled. This gizmo, I think, maybe just honestly is a little too small. A little too small. Good for, of course, the accessory to come included with it. But I do feel all, often maybe too small when you're displaying it with the rest of the gremlins themselves. So those are the gizmos. We're going to put those to the side. We're actually going to move this guy out of the way as well. Stripe, you want to stick around for this review? No, apparently he doesn't. Okay, so we're going to move him out of the way as well. The other thing that the figure or this set comes included with is the ever crucial, if you ask me, cocoon of the gizmos or mogwais. Mogwais, of course, when they start to eat. Still don't know how really the rules work. If I'm feeding this thing seven in the morning, it's technically still after midnight. I know I'm beating a dead horse. There's some, there was some assembly that was required. More so, one of the strands of mucus attaches to the back of the, uh, the cocoon, simply just by the way it's sitting inside the tray like this flat. They wouldn't have been able to put the little strand of slime sticking out from the back. So that instead, what they end up doing is they just include this as an extra piece. You can see that of the shapes of stretched slime, these ones have specifically square shaped pegs. You take to the back of the actual cocoon, you can see there's a smaller hole, a smaller square shaped hole, and a slightly longer rectangular one. Simply just take the two parts and just attach it to the back of, of I want to say the egg, but of the cocoon. Now, you really do have to apply a lot of pressure to get these in here. And even still by putting the pressure in that I think I'm doing, it still results in the part of the slime actually falling off. I suppose the long-term plan is I could e easily just glue it in place. I mean, that would really permanently apply that and mean that it would never com come off again. But if I'm really planning to have these displayed anyways, maybe I don't mind the fact I would have to glue that in place to stay then or keep that in place. I'm going to leave it off for the time being for all the work I just spent to do, to do that. Uh, looking at the cocoon itself, as you can see, it's translucent plastic, clear plastic. And then what they've done is they've airbrushed the coloring of the darker cocoon color over top of it. It's got some really nice texturing done to it. Something almost similar to what Giger would have invented. It sort of looks like this, the hide of an alligator, but it's got some really cool dark colors of gray added in there. And then again, you've got the little strands of a more translucent, almost cobweb color. It doesn't open up. There's nothing actually that moves or you can't, you know, can't section it or take a part off of it, but it's literally just a cocoon. And I think I would almost even consider getting more than one of this set, maybe another two. Okay. Maybe another four. And then maybe have a couple of cocoons in the background. Again, like the Mogwais have been busy. They've been eating after midnight. I still don't know. I still don't know how the rules work. Uh, that's primarily the majority of the accessories that come included with this set. Other than the one other thing that comes included with is a, is a change of clothes. You get yourself a mask and then you get yourself this cardboard cutout of a gremlin that has the sweat top and it also has the leg warmers down below. I'm going to talk more about this in a second. First though, the one thing that also comes included with is the ski mask gremlin. Now what they've done, clever though difficult, is they've actually put an actual head of a, of a gremlin inside the mask. The mask itself feels very similar to a material like a sock. This will eventually fit over the neck of the existing gremlins, but it does actually have some decent detailing done to it. Now, I could have probably, I wonder if they could have pulled off just simply giving a ski mask. The thing though about gremlins though, is it would be, you'd have to remove the ears. And just to kind of bring in an example right now here of Stripe, the ears themselves, I would feel, would break or potentially break if you weren't too careful to remove these from the sides and then just take the mask and fit it over top. This at least is really fitted to the face. It does also have, one thing nice to see, is that it does actually have an open and closed mouth. So I like that. I just don't like the way you have to install it to the figure. I'm not going to do it here with Stripe. Stripe's the leader. He doesn't have to worry about that. But what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to reach off to the side... I've taken some precautionary measures here. I'm going to bring in the ultimate gr uh, gremlin. Oh, one of them. I have like two or three of these. Uh, I spent some considerable time trying to remove the head. I used a hairdryer. I used then hot water. And then I rinsed and repeated until finally I was able to remove the ball joint. And even when I removed it, I removed it the wrong way. So you can see there's the ball joint. Look at the size of this. It's the size of a joystick. It really, this part should have stayed behind in the neck and a smaller joint than this should have been the thing that removed from the, the top of the head. Either way though, it took a lot of time and uh, 
you clearly could see that this was never really designed to be removed in the first place. If that was the case, they would have used a smaller peg. But eventually I did remove it. Just be really careful taking this off though. Gonna have to spend a lot of time then putting this back in place. But for the purpose of this review, we have to make some sacrifices. I'm gonna move that to the side. I'm gonna show you how the ski mask works. Normally when you look at a ski mask like this, normally when you look at a head like this, you would just assume that the joint would be down below here that would attach onto the socket, right? It would sit on like that. Actually, no, it sits on an angle. So when you are putting this over top of the neck, you have to bring this down. Now, keep in mind, there would normally have been a peg right here, so we have to use our imagination. There is actually a socket joint on the inside, but it sits on the side here, not down below. So when you fin this over the neck, for example, resist the urge to actually just leave it like this. What you'll actually have to do instead is just pull the sock up the leg, and then you'll actually attach it here, right? Use your imagination. There's a ball joint right there. And that would still allow, for all intents and purposes, a ball joint. We'd still be able to move the head up and down. It, it looks good, but there was just a lot of hassle to try to get that in place. I'm going to find myself, I think, a permanent sacrificing gremlin for the sake of actually being able to just permanently keep one of these in place. Because I really would not have to think that I would have to do this every single time. If down the road I decide I want to remove the head again, just a lot of heartache trying to remove that with the ball joint being as big as it is. So I'm going to take a sacrificial gremlin... Again, I have like three or four of these and just attach it with the head and then permanently attach it. I don't necessarily need the glue. Glue, you don't have to bring glue into this equation, but I do think, you know, you really would have to heat the, jo the joint really well in order to remove it properly from the head. Not to the point where I actually did leave behind the peg into the head. It should have been the other way around. Anyways, that's what it looks like with the ski mask on the gremlin. It's a pretty seamless look when you look at the coloring of the mouth and the eyes to the rest of the coloring of the body. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. And, and I guess really as it is right now, providing you have it far enough back, the head stays pretty good in place really without even using the ball joint. Although I would, I think, commit a little bit more to the idea of using a ball joint instead, but there's that look certainly as well. Now, if you want to get the sweats on him, I'm going to go ahead and remove the head for right now. And again, use your imagination. We have a head right here right now. I would have to have popped that off. Any, anyways, there's no way around it. I'm just going to put the decapitated gremlin right here. Hope the cocoon's going to hold him up. And then we're going to go ahead and slide this off. You slide it just down the arms, slide it down the legs, being the more narrow part of the cardboard cutout. By the way, that's what it looks like as a cardboard gremlin. You also, again, could use your imagination that maybe gremlins to the new batch. Some gremlin got into a cardboard concoction that somehow turned him flat like this. Yeah, why not? Why not? We'll make use of them. They're there anyways. Go ahead then take also the leggings off. We're going to go just go ahead and remove those. The leggings, honestly, is the hardest thing to get onto the gremlin. Where did I, where did I put my gremlin? <laughs> looking all over the place for the gremlin. Meanwhile, I was looking for one that had the head. It was right there the whole time. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to take the leggings. The leggings are sort of hard to do. You have to kind of take the legs off first, the ankles. <sighs> Again, there's a lot of detaching of things I wouldn't normally have detached on a gremlin. You have to kind of remove the peg. Because really, as it is right now, there's no way to really fit it over the feet. Even though this is a stretchier material, it's still an actual knitted uh, legging. So there's really no way to fit this over the existing feet. So you're going to go have to have, remove the feet altogether. What's really left behind after all of this is basically just a mess of a gremlin. You're going to have to then remove the feet. The head, as we've already discussed, has to be removed. And even just to get the sweats over his body, you're going to also have to remove the hands. The hands are actually the easiest of the batch to remove. Oh, I see what I did there. Detach that, divorce that from the peg. We're going to go ahead and do it on the other side as well. Somewhat nerve-wracking, actually. I made that sound on the other one. I thought for a, for a second I broke the peg. We're going to remove these. You know what? We'll go back. We'll go back. Yes, we'll go back to the leggings in a moment. Let's, for the meantime, seeing as we already have a head missing anyways, let's go ahead and just get this over his body. Slide it up the forearms. Fit it into a sleeve. You're essentially dressing a small child. And then when that's in place, bring it down. Bring it down. Make sure you're straightening off the shoulder after all. And that's basically what the sweats look like. Do I have it going the right way? I hope I have it going the right way. And then for all intensive purposes, again, use your imagination, you'd put the head of the gremlin over top of that. Realizing I didn't want to suffer as much as I did with the head, I took the liberty of actually reheating the legs before trying to yank those off. Sure enough, with those off, I guess we'll take the cleaner portion of the legging and use that to the part of it where we're going to slide up the leg first. Do that on the one side, then go ahead and do the exact same thing then on the other side and slide the leggings up the, 
off up the leg here. And again, the same thing, the same rule applies when it comes to the ski mask. I might just find myself a dedicated gremlin where I can just do this outright to the figure where I don't have to then worry that I would have to detach the feet every single time. Just again, I, I don't feel like the gremlin figures, these ones specifically, were ever really designed with things in place to remove forever any future figure. Like the ball joints for the feet are very large, something that you could break if you're not too careful. And certainly the head, the, the size of the peg that goes into the neck is way too big. Never really intended to be removed. Let's go ahead and pop the feet back in, which is a lot harder to do than it was to remove the legs. And again, just pop those back in place. One thing to mention though about the leggings, now that I've taken the liberty of adding the feet back in them again, is that the leggings themselves, the more you seem to move them around, the more frayed they tend to get. I already have several strands, as you can see, of the wool starting to unravel on the bottom. Like I said, it would be highly suggested, at least on the person's part behind the camera, to tell you guys, if you are looking to pick up the set for yourself, probably just commit, again, one gremlin to do this with, and then just leave the accessories on his body. Because I don't, I don't think you'd really want to be putting, taking as much time as you are to remove all the things that you need to do, put the things on them, like all the clothing, and then to put all the parts back on. Just leave it on one gremlin and call it a day. Again, we're going to use our imagination here. We'll put the head back onto the body. And that's essentially what the gremlin would look like. I'm going to have to probably reheat again the socket for the neck to get the head completely on there. I do like this set in the sense that I, I like more so the cocoon. The cocoon for me and especially gizmo. Let's go ahead and bring back in the other gizmos here. The standing gizmo. The gizmo in the Barbie car. I think for this, the mileage right here is where it's worth. Worth getting this set. I do like this. I do like the ski mask that they included with the with the accessory release. But I just don't like the hassle that had to go along with actually removing this from the figure's body. And again, like you could use the ski mask too. Or again, you could use two dedicated gremlins. I think really for what I would suggest is commit the idea of which gremlin you want to use. If you have extra ones at least working in your collection right now, use those ones. Commit to them actually displayed with the, the, the sweats, the sweat top, the leggings down below. Put the gremlin head back on and then just hope you don't have to do that again just because again the size of the peg uh, i i like this and if not for the fact i would have then a secondary third or even fourth version of of gizmo i might see myself even getting another set of these just so i can get a couple more cocoons in my collection for what it's worth i do think the gremlins accessory set is worth picking up especially if you have been collecting the neca gremlins figures to its credit, one thing it has going for it is, first of all, a gremlin cocoon. The first time ever we've actually gotten this from NECA Toys, and all the more reason that you probably could see yourself picking up more than one of them just so you can have more cocoons in the background. I would hope even at some point, maybe at some point, NECA would even release just the cocoons on their own as a way to, of course, get the most mileage out of the mold, maybe release like a two-pack cocoon set. Maybe not necessarily with a smaller size gizmo, but at the very least, just the cocoons on their own. Because I'm sure collectors would still be interested to pick up more than one cocoon. I know certainly I'm more interested to pick up more than one cocoon. As for gizmo himself, this original standing gizmo was packaged along with the Santa Stripe. I think its size was more so just so he could fit inside Santa's sack. Not really so he would be proportionally accurate to the sizing of a regular gr uh, gizmo or a regular gremlin. Unfortunately, though, it is out of size when you do have it compared with a regular gizmo, like the one that we just recently had a look at the reissue gizmo. Right away, you can see right away that the Mogwai gizmo here that comes included with this accessory set is a tad too small. I understand, obviously, why they wanted to go with the smaller size gizmo. It was a way to stand, still pack in the Barbie car, because let's face facts, if they were to make a Barbie car the size of what a normal size gizmo, gizmo wouldn't even be able to sit in it anyways, because his legs wouldn't be able to bend that far up in order to have him properly seated. But just to also release a standalone Barbie car specifically for that gizmo, I don't know how many collectors would probably still be on board to get a Barbie car solely for that reason. So I understand why they had to pack it in with this, and I can also understand why they used a smaller gizmo to get the job done. This is where I think the set is valued the most. While again, I do appreciate the fact that they include the ski mask head sculpt, and I do like actually the idea that they did use a sculpted head inside the ski mask. But unfortunately, by going back to an older figure, which I still feel was never really designed to have things removed off of it. Newer figures are always usually based with smaller posts and pegs into their neck. That allows you then to swap out the heads if they ever come, for example, with swappable heads. But the older gremlins never really were intended to be having anything swapped out on them. Legs and hands are already a thing that you're going to have to deal with. But then when you're dealing with a joystick-sized peg inside the neck just to remove the head, 
that's a lot of time being spent on your part to try to get that head. In fact, honestly, it, it took me about, I would say, 45 minutes to finally get the head off the neck. It involved me having to heat the neck. I put it in first in hot water. Then I used a hairdryer. Then I went back and used the hot water again until finally it popped. And it didn't unfortunately pop the way I would have hoped. I would have hoped then the bigger ball joint would have still stayed behind in the neck and I would have got maybe a smaller one coming out and staying behind. Unfortunately, it was the other way around. The larger peg stayed with the head, which meant that I had just a barren socket for the neck then to take the ski mask. Well, you already saw in the review how well that worked out. I do like it. I almost think I would have maybe even been... If they had offered the accessory set, let's just throw this as a scenario out there. If they had included the accessory set with a full-sized Gremlin, granted it would have been more expensive. It probably would have added an additional, what, $20 or so to the price of the accessory set. But I think if they had included one that had a readjusted or, let's say, retooled peg in the neck where you would be able to swap the head out, I wouldn't mind at all buying the accessory set if I got another Gremlin because you can never have really enough gremlins on your shelf anyways versus going back to an older figure really never was designed to have a removable head and then having a collector trying to spend a lot of time to remove the head without of course breaking the peg didn't break the peg luckily but now i have to try to get that peg back in the neck i'm gonna have to rinse and repeat the heat the heating of the hot water and of course i'll have to use the hair dryer i might even just use the hot water maybe that might be enough to soften up the plastic and put the joint back in it Either way, though, what do you guys think of this accessory set? What would you have done differently to this accessory set? Or do you think you like it the way that it is? Also, let me know your favorite thing that was in this accessory set that NECA did put out. Speaking of which, I'd like to also as well thank the folks over at NECA that did provide the sample of the brand new Gremlins accessory set that we could have a look at in this review. How many times have I said accessory set in this review? Hoping nobody's been taking a tally. But though, if you have enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Also as well, if you have a little more time on your hands and you want to check out more Gremlins reviews, popping up at the very end of this video will also be a playlist of other Gremlins reviews that I've looked at in the past. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.